American psychologists Elizabeth Loftus and John Palmer created a study in order to test theories about suggestibility. They showed a video of car crash to multiple students. Now, the students answered multiple questions about what they saw in the video, but Loftus and Palmer's questions were very intentional. They included the following questions and changed out one specific word to see if it altered students' answers. About how fast were the cars going when they into each other? And they used words like smashed, collided, bumped, hit, and contacted. Why? Because two cars contacting each other doesn't sound as dramatic as two cars smashing each other, right? Well, the psychologists thought so too, and the results of the study show that the choice of the verb made a difference in the participants' memory of what they saw. The people who were asked how fast the cars smashed into each other predicted that they were going up to 40.8 miles an hour. When the cars contacted each other, though, participants reported that they were going 31.8 miles per hour. Depending on the speed limit and other factors in a criminal case, 9 miles per hour could potentially make or break a case. Suggestibility can have a powerful impact on a trial like this. So this study has become one of the most significant contributions to something called the misinformation effect. And the misinformation effect, coined by Loftus, is the phenomenon that describes how memories can change and become false due to exposure from misleading questions, information, or new memories. Next, let's get on to something called the Mandala effect. So I'm going to list off some true and false statements, and you try to tell which ones I'm lying in. Hannibal Lecter never said, hello, Clarice, in Silence of the Lambs. And what was that famous line Darth Vader said? Was it Luke, I am your father? The evil queen in the Snow White movie never said mirror, mirror on the wall. And do you remember the Monopoly board game? Well, the mascot actually does not wear a monocle. And Curious George doesn't have a tail. How many of these did you catch? Well, actually, all of these are false. And if you're scratching your head or doubting me, you're not alone. These facts have been disputed for years, and they all contribute to an eerie idea called the Mandala Effect. The Mandela Effect was named after Nelson Mandela, a civil rights leader and the former president of South Africa. He actually passed away recently, but there are thousands of people who falsely remember his death in the 80s or 90s. And this memory is as vivid as your memory of Hannibal Lecter's Hello Clarice, or an incorrect image of the Monopoly Man. Many people believe that the Mandala Effect explains the possibility of alternate universes, and others push the Mandala Effect in the category of conspiracy theories. But given what we already know about memory, and our unconscious ability to alter and acquire memories that aren't always true, it makes sense that everyone collectively has come to believe the real line from Star Wars is Luke, I am your father. So as you have now seen with the misinformation effect and the Mandala effect, you should know that memory is not really that reliable and our brains are actually really bad at remembering details. The next topic I want to talk about is something called the seven sins of memory. They're from a book called The Seven Sins of Memory, How the Mind Forgets and Remembers. And in the book, Harvard professor and psychologist David Shader dives into each concept and how it creates memory errors. In the rest of this video, I'll just go over the brief definition of each sin. Most of us do not commit these sins with ill intentions. They're often just honest mistakes that we can't control. They might even be frustrating. The first three sins of memory are sins of omission. Sure, the memory might be there, but it's unavailable whenever you need to recall it. Now, the three sins of omission in false memory are absent-mindedness, transience, and blocking. So first off, we have absent-mindedness. Have you ever went into a room only to forget why you walked in there the first place? This is simply a case of absent-mindedness, and it seems to be caused by three main things. Not paying attention to a task at hand like what you're doing, or paying too much attention to something else, or getting distracted by other thoughts or events happening around you. Secondly, we have something called blocking. Have you ever had a word or a phrase on the tip of your tongue? Your memories are blocking your ability to recall information. Blocking can be extremely frustrating, but usually it's only temporary. Like, you'll be in the shower tomorrow and remember that word that you were looking for. And third, we have transience. So what did you eat for lunch yesterday? What did you eat for lunch a week ago, a month ago? What about last year? Do you remember what you ate? It's no secret that memories fade over time. Even though some memories persist due to their traumatic nature or significance, other memories just don't stick. Transience simply explains the concept that memories are less accessible as time goes on. While this seems like just a fact of life, it can make a difference in eyewitness credibility. So the next four sins are sins of commission. They involve a memory that does exist, but may be false, skewed, or contain inaccurate details. The four sins of commission are misattribution, suggestibility, bias, and persistence. So misattribution, also known as source misattribution, occurs when you cannot remember the source of a memory. 
Say you saw a study or a fact quoted in the New York Times. In reality, you heard it quoted on a TV show. It may have been a joke or a fake fact on the show that they were poking fun at, but you think that the credibility is that worthy of a reputable newspaper. And this is an honest mistake, but an example of misattribution nonetheless. When telling stories to people in my life, I fall prey to this sin oftentimes because I have read so many books but fail to remember which book the story was in. It helps a lot when I make book summaries over them though. Next, we have suggestibility. Memory errors can also be created by suggesting something about the person's memory. Just like I mentioned earlier with the Loftus and Palmer study, suggestibility and leading questions can make a big impact on an eyewitness's testimony in court. But suggestibility may pop up even without ill intentions. One example of suggestibility involves the presuppositions to suggest facts. For example, you could ask someone who is rather suggestible, what time in the afternoon did you see the man walking down the street? Now this question itself is very highly suggestive. First of all, it suggests that the person did see a man walking down the street. Secondly, it does suggest that the person saw a man. And thirdly, it also suggests that the time in which they saw the man was in the afternoon as opposed to in the morning or the evening. And if none of these facts were established earlier, that simple question could be a case of leading a witness. Now the second to last memory sin is called bias. Humans are meaning-making creatures. When we observe things around us, we really try hard to make meaning of them based on our prior knowledge. Unfortunately, that prior knowledge may be skewed by bias. And when we go back to recall our observations, that bias may taint what we remember about an incident. So let's go back to that man walking down the street. Based on the area that you were in at the time, the clothes the man was wearing, or even just the color of his skin, your memory of that man might be biased. You might remember him to look suspicious, even if he was just walking down the street. Now this is called bias, and all humans are susceptible to it, even if they try not to be. And in some cases, it can lead to devastating consequences. Lastly, we have something called persistence. There may be some memories that we would rather forget, and I'm not just talking about, you know, embarrassing moments that we all have. Anyone who has experienced trauma understands that the memories of that event, no matter how horrifying they are, might just never go away. Well, the opposite can also happen. The memories may flood back on a moment's notice without warning. It could be triggered by a sensory input, or just come out of the blue. This is called persistence. Memories continue to come back, even when people try to make an effort to get rid of them. Traumatic memories can cause psychological damage, and when they persist, a person may display symptoms of PTSD or depression. So, as a summary of this video, the Loftus and Palmer study changed words in a sentence to see how suggestible students were. They were very suggestible. The Mandala effect is when we misremember something in our past, and usually, large groups of people misremember the same thing. And there are seven sins of memory, transience, absent-mindedness, blocking, misattribution, suggestibility, bias, and persistence. And if you'd like to learn more about cryptomnesia and something called the skeleton theory of memories, you may want to check out the full article in the description below. Otherwise, if you want to test your memory, you can do that too. I want to let you know that I just finished developing a memory quiz that tests your long-term, your short-term, and your working memory in less than five minutes. And if you'd like to participate and see how you compare to other people, there's a link in the description below so you can take that quiz absolutely free. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you in the next video.